we can transition over to our main, I guess, topic of what we want to express. So this particular season, I think we've mentioned, uh, yeah. we want to show Minnesota as like a big hub for Carnatic music, just like how Dallas is a big hub for its music, San Francisco, and all these other big cities are very, uh, like, you know, strongly held for Carnatic music. We want to display Minnesota as the same thing. So tell us a little bit about how, like, the community in Minnesota, like, it, just tell us about the uh, community in Minnesota and what you experience. I think that's a very important part, e even in your, your series, but in my life as well. The Minnesota has a very big part in my music. As I was telling before, right, when I, um, I had a very big break in my, in my, in my Mridangam learning and even playing uh, after my master's, right, when my, during my master's, I moved out of the place and then I went to um, another city to do my master's and then I moved on, moved to Bangalore where I started my career. And then I had a, I played few concerts in Bangalore during my initial time with the uh, um, like Bangalore Brothers and all, uh, he, the yeah. Bangalore Brothers is some, I, I, thought, I don't know whether you know, they are nowadays a very kind of upcoming um, vocalist in, in Bangalore. And I've played with them, they are of my age, they are also working in Infosys and everything, so we all know each other. So, But after that, it was really, really tough for me to continue my um, Radangam learning due, during, with, due to a lot of facts, like, you know, Bangalore pace of life and then their time not available, the traffic and all, whatever you can say, right? It takes a lot of time for a lot of courage and willpower, willpower for you to stay in your music. So Minnesota is the one which gave me the turning point in my life. When I came into Minnesota in 2015 and uh, the, the people around here or the, the musical culture around here i never anticipated that right i never expected that like you know it's like i will get such a uh, community where people there are like people nirmala rajshekar or sri ram uh, the people who are really professional who are really a class uh, you know a, a top artist who goes to season and that level of like a what you know part of uh, you can say silicon valley Valley of IT, right? You know, right, we consider right. the Silicon Valley of music is Madras, right? Chennai, right? Where right, all right. The Star Wars. So, couple of them are here. That's a big thing, you know. Yeah. So, right. uh, so that I never expected, and then that gives me a very big turning point. And then, of course, there is a lot of time, you know, compared to India. You know, in your work life, there is a lot of time, family time in in in, in, in that's especially in US. It's not just the, not the in Minnesota, right? It's in a right. US how it used to be. So that's actually started my back to my learning, right? And then a couple of people I really grateful um, uh, to bring me back to this musical thing is first and foremost is Sridham. Sridham, uh, I'm really grateful because I met him in 2016 January for the, the Tyagaraja Aradhana, the first mm -hmm. Tyagaraja Aradhana after I came to Minnesota and I met him and then that's how my things started again. There is a spark came in, like my mind, man, here it's everything is happening. It's a complete waste of if I'm not doing again, you know, and started playing again. So that's, and the support he gave me is, 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 a, is a biggest turning point in my life. And then there are other people also in Minnesota, which I really wanted to um, say thanks for like Anu Krishnan. She, she, she is the first concert I played in in Minnesota uh, after coming to the the first concert I played is for it's for Anu, and um, yeah, that was um, I think India Fest. I I don't remember exactly. It was uh, something close to that. You know, this one I played a one hour concert with it. So yeah. that's how I started my restarted. You know, it's not started restarted my Mridangam learning. Mm -hmm. And another person who is not from Minnesota but our neighboring state Wisconsin is Vanita. Vanita is another person mm -hmm. who really supported me and uh, really brought me back to, to all these musical things. So what I'm trying to say is I think even though it's like a, such a, it's, a state, it's not like a California or it's not like a, a, a east inside of the state, we have so much of talent and so much of e 
community initiations going on in the on the on the musical world right and that's really helped me to come back to, to my second phase of my musical life second phase of learning of musical life so that's so minnesota has a very big role in my life you know so yeah i can see how much minnesota has impacted you in your life with uh just like you know the culture in minnesota and just like having the complete exposure to carnatic music in minnesota so yep. it's really nice yeah so talking about all these um um you talking about um manu krishan anu krishan anti and all the concerts that you've played for several different artists across the us in minnesota in india and such um amrudanam um it's not like a vocalist as you mentioned it's um you need to keep a rhythm and each artist has a different approach yeah to how they how they're going to accompany or how they're going to play a concert and can you tell us something about how you how what your mindset is going into a concert as a amrudanam player and as an accompaniment to the vocalist I think I'm always nervous, you know, before starting any concert, right? I'm I'm very nervous. I'm very nervous about the concert, right? As as right. The, uh, I think you have to be. That's what I feel, you know. Right. I feel like that gives you a lot of focus. And then I normally I am not a person who I clearly ask. I always introduce myself to anyone as a as, as, even though I am like that. I'm I'm a learner. Right? Right. I, I'm not a professional mandolin player. I'm a learner. Right. I I treat this as another learning opportunity. So I always uh, ask uh, people, um, you know, who, if I am first time meeting them or playing with them, what are they singing? How are they singing? What kind of things they like? Do they like to be, you know, um, you know? Sometimes people are not so much, um, especially vocals also like uh, you know so not so much liking the way we play like if we play like a lot of yeah. you know solo so yeah. in the in between and everything mm. yeah. so i used to have the, i like to have kind of a a conversation with them like you know what is the what is the thing expectation from me and stuff like that and then i have to practice that try to practice that way right. and then i think my in my second phase as i said i also now i'm start i forgot to mention my gurus right i'm currently learning from trishur narendran sir right from chennai so that gives me a good um, you know another good learning like i used to talk to my guru and then um, my and the, about the concerts and about the things what i need to play so it's a completely different perspective right now i have in my career previously like maybe like when i i was playing i used to maybe play more concerts in back in india in my childhood than i'm playing here but i don't I, i i didn't have a maybe my age was that kind of an age right like a teen age kind of a time right but now i have more more maybe you can say maturity or something like that right because of right so because of course, yeah. yes this is the great gray hair right so <laughs> so you get to you get to analyze a little bit more and then i am talking to my guru at the same exact same time you know in chennai like in my classes and everything so i getting completely a different perspective so i'll tell you another one a perspective i got it from my guru is the usage of topi for playing concerts right yeah so i know there is a pattern we have seen people play, playing a different pattern but were to play your tom in your playing concert is completely a new aha moment i had it in maybe maybe like few months back you know mm-hmm. because because the thing is nowadays i am talking to the my guru as very very you know focused on following the following a concert following a uh, in a person right following an instrument or following a um, vocalist right so that kind of a thinking is it's more analytical kind of a thinking king has started is what i i could understand for myself yeah. otherwise it was just like in you know, a childhood time it was just a just like a coming up you know with something like that but more methodological analysis is happening is what i feel about myself yeah, yeah. so yeah so it's it's again continuous learning so you're all learning right. every day and from right. every every concert you're learning right so yeah. and i got that you're learning from tushu narendran sir and he falls under the mani sarbani um yep. is there any from your past teacher is there any difference to the 
um, is there any difference to Tushu Narendra and Sir's teaching? Because the Mani Sir, Mani Sir Bani is, a, of course, a very different style of teaching and a very different style of play. I think, I think in, since I, I'm from Kerala and that people who I've learned with are the, all the Kerala, there is, there is an inherent um, influence of Palakan Maneer in everywhere in, in Kerala, right? So I personally didn't feel any, anything different. Another thing is, even I, I mentioned before, Trishud Narendra Sar also has learned from Narayana Pisharadi Sar. Who I oh, oh right. Okay. So if you think about it, right, it's all, it's all the same. And in, in, in Kerala, the, the, it's a little different than, you know, Chennai or different than Tanjavur or different than the proper Tamil Nadu. Because Kerala right. is always look up to Chennai. Mm-hmm. The music industry of Kerala is always looking up to, it's like, you know, a Bangalore software industry looking at the okay, Silicon Valley to California or something like that. It's always, yeah. that's your place yeah. to be at. So, and uh, our envy is Palakad Manir, right? Kerala. Yeah, of course, of but, course. So I think that's how, that is there in everybody's style. To be frank, right, before coming to Bangalore or before coming to Minnesota, I never knew that there is, different Banis exist in Rodanga. Right. You know? It's not like Hindustani uh, concert uh, thing where people clearly say about Kharanas and then how do you teach each Kharanas and stuff like that. Right. We don't have a clear cut definition about what is Tanjavur Vani versus what is Maniyar Vani. Right? Yeah, we can make out people have done a lot of things, but I have never personally experienced anything that much different. But now mm-hmm. I st- start seeing it. As I said, you know, we can see the differences. But so I don't see much difference when my, in my um, childhood learning compared to the learning what I have right now. Mm. It's, all, it's all from the Palakkad Maniyar style, you know. And then yeah. there, are, there are a few differences like Maniyar, even though it's a Maniyar style, Narendra Sar is Regusar's, uh, you know, Palakkad Regusar style, right? And then Palakkad yeah. style, style is same, but the core ways and everything, core, but it's yeah. slightly different from Maniyar right. core ways to Regusar's core way, right? So... So there are so that many differences, but as as, as such, I don't see any difference myself. You know, so that makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. So talking about like you know MN and how like how MN and India were both you know really like like their communities are you know super. I can't think of a good word to put it, but like you know how both of them like help you. In, in your Carnatic music career. So tell us now, let's go into like a, a different what path of thinking about it. So like some diversity. So in Minnesota, we had, we have all these different types of music, like, let's say, um, Western we have, music. yeah, we have Western, Western music. music, rap, rock, all these types Pop, of things. And all that. Yeah. And same thing in India, we have, we also, we, they have similar things as well like that. So, and, and having Carnatic music in that gray area, like, what do you what what are your, what are your thoughts about that? So I see I basically I'm I am a listener of all kind of music, but the thing influenced me is is Indian music. That's all. Right? You know I like more um, Indian music, whether it is Hindustani classical or, or Carnatic or bhajans or ghazals or Bollywood songs. Doesn't matter, right? I like the melody of Indian music. So I'm not. I have not put myself into lot into the other side of, uh, you know, the musics like whatever you just said about the country music or the jazz or any other Western musics, right? So I, I am not a person to comment or anything on that. And then even it, I don't think it has influenced me either because I'm not that much of a, a you know, listener of those kind of music, right? So it didn't really matter to me when I came to Minnesota or US it because I my interest are still Indian music so I still listen only Indian music right so it didn't really affect me uh, in that, that, that diversities but one thing I would say is is really um, you know give me a different thing is about is the bhajans what is happening here right all the all the such sangams happens here, right? All, all, all Gitram, so, yeah, so I one thing I know 
it's it's actually it's nothing to do with the it's the being a another country right the people who lives here like we are from india but we are living in a different country right and that aspect is therefore uh, is influencing music and influencing different styles of things so i i was in bangalore but we never used to have like a monthly bhajan every in somebody's house right right but i am i i spent my uh, myself in uh, one year in in middle east in in, in early, my early part of my career and i could see the, the same thing happening there because they are all indian community living in a completely different country we used to have every month some kind of satsang mm-hmm. so and i can see the same thing here in minnesota right? and that's really eff- impacted me right and then we used to have um like now because of the pandemic we have a different story but we used to have like monthly bhajans at least in the summer time and uh, you know first few months of winter right till the vacations right and then uh, that really helps you to listen to the different kinds of music indian it's again indian music but it's like a more devotional music right and that is right, that right. really helped me and my kid you know that's now now we are talking about my son right you know that's how my co- concerns are more more than me now my son is my concern right <laughs> so it yeah. gives him good uh, you know exposure to all the all the music so that's that's something i really appreciate about um, being outside of india and then you know the the things about that so yeah talking about your son sarvesh um he's a very very zelangesh yes. shreya yes. oh shreya sorry shreya sorry um shreya she's shaping up into being a very very outstanding mrudangam mrudangam artist young artist can you tell us some um like can you tell us the father and son like the relationship between you guys and what and do you teach him or do, how does he take stuff from you and can you tell us about the relationship like the musical relationship yeah i think you and sana yeah you you know right you actually hit it on the right on the nail right so yeah. fa- father son relationship and a guru uh, you know shishya relationship slightly different you know so i made myself clear from the beginning that you know i'm not going to really teaching my son right because there are a lot of aspects about it right being a parent is different than being a little bit different than being a guru because you will be more right. selfish about your son you know right. Right. the problem is once you know you, your son can play something you always want him to play that thing every time you know be, right. because you know he right. can do it right and that will mm-hmm. create conflicts right i knew that this is so i i was very from the beginning and then you don't get any other good teacher than shrina and i am telling you from my my heart right and then the way he handles the kids right in the is in the kid age right so i i am so fortunate that shreya started learning from shridam now he is learning started learning from bhupati sir directly from chennai so it's it's really affecting him as a mrudangam player then i am just i wanted to be just a person who can uh make sure he can practice he understands that half an hour or a one hour class and then he can interpret what the real uh, cholle is or real the chapter is and then continue to practice and that is the role i am playing in the in his mrudangam learning place just a, a person who can assist who can um you know let him know whether if any mistake happens rather than he, d- he needs to wait for the next week to correct himself right he can mm-hmm. get it corrected immediately i think that's the that's the benefit he is getting by be, me being here i think that's the role i would like to play and that's a role i am willing to play you know for future and hoping that he will you know he will learn and and again you guys are really the inspiration of shreyas and i'm saying saying this is just not because of the cheer show because if the shreyas music thing is uh, um changed after the the veena ganam last year yeah his interest to the music like it's a, it's a young age right so people's interest keep changing you know if you put an xbox in front of and then put a mrudangam in front of people kids right. will take xbox they will not take right. the of course of course yeah so yeah. it's actually changing because of the uh, because of the inspiration to you the young guys like in minnesota and then i i still i always feel like i face that thing you need to learn as a group right you cannot learn right. as a 
small person you need to learn as a group i've learned as a group a group of kids and then i'm i'm really you know happy that you guys are here in minnesota who who make things happens as a group and then that's really is the one which shreyas also is getting and i'm just really happy about that so yeah and veena ganam was a beautiful program that shreyas played very well in, and we're all glad to take a part in yeah. take a part in it yeah and thank you so much for your kind words i mean yeah i mean we're we're also still learners but i mean yeah. to play an inspiration in a young kid's life yeah. it's it's yes. something else yeah i i he he was ex, ex, actually helping me to prepare for this podcast you know he was so oh. excited oh wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway so transitioning onwards to like you know i guess like from like you know little kids onwards so your advice to upcoming talents about like you know prepping for concerts or about practice so what are your thoughts what would you like to say to the world like yeah, i think i i i don't know whether i'm a person who can give a lot of things about that because i am still a learner like everybody right and then, but one thing i i i follow or i try to follow is everybody says practice right everybody has to practice there is no question about practice right people say you need to practice 10000 hours to become like a little bit about a master right so anything you play any chole you want to play in the in the stage you have to have a 10000 hours of practice of that chole right to get it clearly clearly the way you want to do so practice 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 there is nothing um, you know new about it right but one thing i my guru Uh, has told me is play wherever there is a shruti and there is a talam so you go to a place and you you see if there is a shruti is there there is talam is there you should go and play there right and play by playing on a stage and by by playing with someone that's a different kind of a learning right and my narendra sir used to say when his experience of learning from uh, regusar right in chennai so he used to say the best way to be a master of a particular core way or something like that which your guru taught the best thing is play that on the concert on stage if you play that core way on the stage on a concert you will not forget that anymore right, right. the focus right. you with the focus you played that you would have practiced it at home and then the focus at which you play that in you know on stage is completely different than the focus that you are practicing definitely you have to have like as i said 10000 hours of practice to play it but when you start playing it that never goes away from your mind and that's something you need to you need to think about so there is nothing like uh, you know i cannot find out opportunities where you can play with music because that yavartanam you will be only playing like you had that you remember that acharya devo bhava program what sri yeah. ram uh, started the bhubuti sir used to say yeah. uh, ubendra sir told him saying that only 20 minutes of the 3 hour concert you will be playing tanyavartanam rest of the 2 and a half hours you play for music right so you need to go and play with people where there is a shruti and there is a talam is there right. go and play right that's sure. something yeah. another sure. thing i i wanted to emphasize is you you listen to all kind of concerts that no problem but you listen more to your guru parampara if you are like you know this is especially for the mridangam stuff right it gives a lot of benefit right you can you can listen to mayalpatam sir playing you can listen to karikunmani sir playing and then you can enjoy that but at the amount of music you are listening for the others make sure that you should listen more about your guru parampara the difference is like whatever you learn from your guru is what you are see them playing and that gives you a completely different learning you know like how to do that how to do it how to master it because they are playing in the in a master mastered situation right they are taking that core way and then playing like if i learned a core way today and then i see regusar playing uh, here that regusar playing that core way it's a completely different learning experience mm-hmm. you will learn a lot so you need to have a a that whatever guru parampara you have i think you need to listen more and then right now nowadays i think you guys are so fortunate to have lots and lots of 
technology uh, you know, technology yeah. youtube pandora wherever you go right you, it's available right when i when yeah. our childhood it was very rare like we used to go to the concerts and then you know listen and then you need to remember stuff right and right, right. Yeah, you used to have some kind of uh, cassette recordings and stuff like that but i personally didn't have a lot of technological benefit in my childhood like i didn't have a cassette player till you know what my college days i think so so but, so that is another thing you you are so fortunate and you are lucky to listen to you can listen a lot of things right so keep listening keep learning keep learning or more listening of your guru parampara that's what i will say um so and one more thing i will say like i know like you have a lot of uh, it's you know call you know your colleges your high schools your mm. amount of work one thing is important is you need to start enjoying your playing before you get busy into your academics mm. right. if you if you reach that kind of a thing of like you start enjoying yourself then your interest stays alive in your mind and that's it's, it's an ex, ex, example i have is i i never lost my murdangam i even after 20 15 18 years of gap in my learning i could restart my learning is just because of that because we could you know we he had the interest and we could start i could start i started enjoying myself when i was a teenager so i knew what is good so when you when you can play something and then you start enjoying yourself that's a very key about thing about learning right and so that will stay in your mind and then it will never go away from your mind so you should enjoy what you are playing and you should listen more and practice that's all i i can say that's all i am trying to follow yeah. as a learner like you guys as a student like you guys so hopefully yeah. it'll all yeah that's the best advice that anybody could give thank you for that thank advice we will definitely we will definitely be needing that um you were talking i before the concluding question you were talking about before we like to wrap before we wrap the wrap it up with the concluding question um you were talking about um listening to your uh, you would you wanted us to listen more to our guru parampara um in the aspect of listening which vocalist and um mrindas like it can be a combo or it can be just the two separate would do you prefer to listen to in the, i in- i will not say that like you know there is a is there any combo there yeah. so right now i think for example i can tell you from my experience examples right i i have i start trying to get recordings of narendran sars and raghu sars wherever it is possible right correct and then it doesn't matter whether narendra sar is playing with kvn or you know that's a that's a pair or you know raghu sar playing with kvn that's a pair everywhere you will see it right, right. but you have to uh, you know you, you, you have to think like i started listen, so looking at some somebody is think saying about the kamboji adalavarnam right i'll start searching in google narendra sar playing for kamboji adalavarnam right how does it play? right yeah. or raghu sar played with um, you know kamboji adalavarnam how how was it right so it irrespective of the uh, the vocalist or the instrumentalist i think because in your life you will have to play with all the artists right that's what you are trying to achieve right so there's nothing like that kind of a pair is so important to me rather than in each situation how is your whatever you learned from your guru how you see your guru doing that on stage right that knowing it and then that is very a completely different experience so that's all you need to look for i don't think you need to be really worried about whether it is uh, you know only one concert your guru has played with this particular person okay. um so you don't listen to nothing like that right so it's just basically what kind of situation a one person is doing it and then that is what you learned from your guru maybe like you know few classes before he taught you how to play um, you know for a uh, 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 so, something right for some right. column or something like that right so you if you start seeing that he doing it in a particular occasion that's a completely different experience so right. that's wonderful um so yeah so to like proceed said to conclude our final question we have for you today is what made you choose to 
pursue Carnatic music? Like, what, like, what was that factor? You know, as I jokingly say, right, it's not that what my brother is learning, right? That's how, that's about it, right? <laughs> and see, thing is, as a kid, right? It's it's not most of the time. It's not your choice what you start learning, right? Whether you you start learning your math or you start learning your science or thing, it's your parents who have influenced you to start learning something. And I am so grateful my parents introduced me to the music, right? One thing I will say, the, the benefits, I will not say why I am continuing, but the benefits I got it is because it's a rhythmic thing, it gives a rhythm in your life, right? In your life, a rhythm is everything important, right? It will give you a pattern in your life. You look for patterns for in your life because Mridangam is such an influence in my life. Whether it's a, it's a rhythmic one, it's a pattern oriented one. So that gives you a lot of, um, you know, happiness. And then I used to practice more during my exam holidays. It's another thing to go, to shift your focus to, and then you can bring back to your actual focus. So music is something in my life, which is the next thing. The Whenever I think about something nowadays also, like in the pandemic time, like you all are working from home, right? If I five minutes, if I have a 30 minutes meeting and then it ended five minutes early, what will I do the rest of the five minutes? I'll pray more than go. That's what I do. So that gives you a completely different focus shift. And then it, it is a, it's a place where you can, you can forget everything else and then spend your time on. And I, I think it will give you a companion in your life. So being a mus music world, it doesn't matter whether you play for a concert, for a professional concert, nothing matters. As long as you can enjoy it, you have something else to bank upon. If you have some problem, you have something else to bank upon. That gives me, that is the one which is giving me to continue in Carnatic music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and fortunate to be in Minnesota, such a beautiful place where all these things are happening, a lot of opportunities. What, what else to ask for, you know? So. Yeah. That's very inspirational, Uncle. That you could say music is your home, second home. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much, Uncle, for your time coming on Thank the show so and answering these questions. Thanks a lot. But you guys, your guys are doing a wonderful thing. And as I tell you, it's your ins clear inspiration to all the youngsters, all the learners of music. And I'm so happy you are doing this. And you let, let the God help you to continue to do this and then give you all the best things about what whatever I pray to the God, whatever I could give you a little for that, that will become your musical career best. That's all I wanted to do. So thank you so well, much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Please make sure to go like and subscribe the video and go check out our social media links to check out the latest updates on who we're going to have on the podcast and what times you're going to be on. Thank you so much for watching. This is the MN Bros signing off.